Good morning. 10 o'clock. Time for our coffee and the card. Good morning. Happy Friday. We'll wait for some people to hop on and we can start our project. Today we're doing something called spotlighting. And um, it's a technique that's been around for a while and there are different ways you can do it. But I'll show you a quick, easy way because that's what we're all about today. A quick, easy card. Just um, enjoy your coffee or tea, whatever. I have a, um, a local brew here, which is um, called Zeke's. And there's a lot of different um, varieties of the Zeke's coffee. And so that's what I really like, the, the Zeke's in my Stampin' Up! mug. So good morning. I see some people hopping on. Remember to leave a little comment, say hello, say who you are, maybe where you're from, and then um, you'll be in my raffle. Okay, the end of the video, later on in the day, I do a little raffle and um, could win some prizes. So good. Yeah, I saw some thumbs up. Hi, welcome. See people hopping on. Okay, very good. Nice to see you all. I see faces. Um, and like I said, leave a comment. All right. I know it takes a little while to, um, a little delay for the comments to come in. So bear with me here. Okay. Um, yeah. Hi guys. Oh, I saw Elizabeth last night. We had a Zoom meeting. Good. Oh, hi Fonda. Nice to see you. Thanks for posting your things online. I, I appreciate people who are posting on the Facebook page and sharing their projects. One of the latest things I had was, what are you working on lately? What kind of projects? So some people were saying Easter cards, some are sharing birthday cards or just whatever projects they're doing. Post a picture there so we can see and be inspired, get some different ideas. Okay. Oh, good. Betty caught live. Great. All right. Nice to see everybody. Okay. Um, so what's everybody drinking today? Did you bring a beverage? Did you bring a morning beverage? Yeah, I said I have... Um, my Stampin' Up! mug. This is a great mug. I'm not sure if they still sell this one. They might, but um, it's steel and it's very well insulated. It keeps things really, really hot or cold. So whatever you want to do. And um, so I have a Baltimore blend of coffee called Zeke's. And there are lots of different blends, different flavors. And it's... Uh, I just, I just love it. So this one is called Armistead's Blend. Okay, Armistead was one of the generals in the, um, I was stationed at Fort McHenry, which is right in Baltimore. And that's where the national anthem was written. Okay, Francis Scott Key. So if you're ever in the Baltimore area, you can visit the fort, Fort McHenry. And it's um, a national landmark, I think it is. So you, if you have the National Parks Pass, you can get in for either free or a discount. Okay, so it's kind of a fun thing to do. Okay, so coffee. Elizabeth's got coffee. Yeah, we were up a little late last night, Elizabeth's damping. <laughs> um, just um, a reminder, if you are a customer of mine one month, you get to craft along with me um, when the month is over, in the beginning of the next month. All right, so um, we had some people join in last night, and we had a good time. We worked on a lot of different card designs using scraps, our leftover DSP. Um and it's amazing. I continued once the Zoom meeting was over and I made a bunch more cards and I didn't even make a dent in my designer series paper. And it's, it's amazing how you can really make that stretch and go a long way. A long way. So um, anyway, so nice, nice people joining on. Okay. Like I said, don't forget to leave a comment. Say hello. Good morning. Where you are. What you're drinking today. Oh, spring has sprung in Texas. All right, Pat. Woo. It's uh, started here. Daffodils are out. The cherry blossoms are out. The buds are on the maple trees. They're turning red. And um, although today we had a little bit of rain with, we saw a couple little flurries mixed in with, with that, but um, not much. It lasted two seconds. You blinked and it was over. <laughs> so not, we got absolutely no snowfall. Okay, a flurry here or there, but that was it. So anyway, People are safer that way. It's, it's okay. All right. So grab your, your beverage and um, get ready for our technique. Today is called spotlighting. If you missed it before, five inches of snow coming, Kay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, hi, Julie. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. 
our technique is called spotlighting. It's been around for a while, and we um, are just kind of revisiting it today. So it's very simple. Again, the purpose of the, this morning um, coffee and a card is just simple projects. Okay, if you want more intricate projects, look at some of my other videos. Um, and th that's more what those things are for. I just want these to be kind of short and easy and just kind of say hello and happy weekend. All right. So, um, oh, okay. Susan had snow too. All right. Well, <laughs> the flurries for four inches. That's funny. <laughs> I guess that lasted a while, right? Oh, yeah, yay. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera around, and if I miss some of your comments, please don't worry. I will catch up with them later, because when I turn my phone around, it's hard for me to focus on comments and the project at the same time. So give me one second so I can try to do this without messing everybody up too much. Oh, I lost my hand. All right, quick flip. Changing mounts here. Ta-da! There we go. Hope I didn't get you too dizzy there. 20 mile an hour winds. So, oh, my gosh. Here we had a very windy day a couple days ago, too. But, oh, well. It's March. That's what March does, right? And I have three different cards. They're the same layout, but just three different ways to do it. You know, that's kind of what I do. So, um... I, I'm going to show you, I'm not sure which one I want to start with. I have three different sets. I suggested to have flowers. Um, anybody crafting along live today? Okay, on the live video, you know, weigh in if you're crafting along with me. 10 o'clock Eastern time this Friday morning. Hmm. Okay, well, maybe I'll start with... What I'm going to call the middle one. I'm going to show you three different ways to do this. One that's black and white with pop of color. Another one that is more monochromatic. And then another one that is full of color. All right. So um, I'll use Poppy Parade. And I wonder if I need more light here. Okay. That's a little bit better. Poppy Parade. Real red. You need a colored card base, so I'm using real red. Your card base is your standard size, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. All right, fold in half. We're going to hold this horizontally. And then we need, I said one layer, you actually will need another one for the inside of your card. So add that to your list of materials. That kind of will go without saying, I think, once you start on the card you'll see that oh yeah um i need something on the inside because you don't want to just write on here you want that white inside all right so i'm going to put the card base aside you also need the same color card base in a square two inches and you need a piece of white that's one and three quarters inches and i'm going to show you how when i was doing this last night as a little practice i did a couple of them and then I realized, oh, I cut one of them the wrong size. I cut one to, um, that ended up being, the white one was too big. And I'm going to show you how I kind of rectified that. <laughs> As there's always a way to fix something. We were talking about that last night, too. Make a little goof. Maybe it'll just turn into a new card. Maybe you can hide it with something or flip something over. So there's always a quick fix. Okay. Oh, Julie, hot shower. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, my God. Four days? Sheesh. Hey, well, I'm glad it's all fixed. <laughs> Yay. Hot shower and hot coffee. Okay. So, spotlighting technique is where we're going to have um, an image going across, our flowers going across our card here. And then this little piece here is going to duplicate what is in that design there. And it's because it's on a separate piece of paper, and then we're going to mat, mat it with the colored cardstock. It's kind of like drawing your eye to, like a spotlight to, oh, this is the, the focal point that you want to look at. And this becomes sort of the background. But it's all going to be really beautiful. So this is the way we do this. We're going to... 
I'm going to spotlight it right here. I'm going to attach this with just a little bit of adhesive. You can either use your stamp and seal or you can put just a little bit of glue on there and I'll show you that because you know how to do this but I would put well I'll do one on one side just a touch of stamp and seal I like to put a little bit on each side all right I'll show you on the next one how to do it with the glue okay just a little bit so it doesn't twist and I first started doing this I put just a touch in the middle but then as I was doing this technique, I noticed, well, it was kind of rotating back and forth. So a little bit on each side will keep it nice and nice and straight for you. Okay, let me turn another light on there. Yeah, that works. All right, so I'm going to take the painted poppies. And I'm going to take these two different flowers here. You want something with flower heads. This one could work nicely too. But I'm going to do these with the big um, flowers, and then we're going to color it in with this little splotch here. This is a two-step stamping, and it gives you that look of like a watercolor wash on it. I'll get those ready and I'm going to use memento black to make my flowers. Now what we're going to do, we're going to stamp right across here and we're going to stamp over this. Now you're going to see because this has some height, the cardstock is actually thick, when we take this off it's going to, um, even when we don't take it off, you're going to see it's not going to be um, a steady image all the way across. We're going to have a little bit of a gap there, but that's okay because we're going to add this matting in the background and it's going to cover it up. Let me get one more block here for my smaller flower. And we're going to do some, a little spray of the flowers across. I'm going to mix them up a little bit. Starting off the paper, leave some room for the other flower. Okay, now you'll see what I mean here. Actually, it came out pretty well, but there really is a little bit of a gap in between here. See, like right here, because this was higher. The ink didn't get in there very really well, but that's okay because we're going to have that mat bigger and it's going to cover up that little gap. Right, let me go to the other flower and fill in a little bit. Okay different directions off the paper a little bit and hmm, I'll do a little something here okay and then we're going to I could fill in some leaves couldn't I hmm well, you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it the flowers. Because the leaves might bring in a little, a little too much. Let me put something here. Okay, so next we're going to use this piece here to fill in the colors of the flowers. Now, it, it's not made to fill in exactly. It's made to be a little splotch of paint that looks like it's been watercolored over. So I don't want to do the leaves right now because this has a different look of this or I might change my mind let, let me see how it goes this little splatter would cover the leaves here and this little splatter would cover the smaller flowers like going across if I did this all the way across so let's just see what it looks like with the red I've done other designs of this but I haven't officially done this one until now so we're kind of cracking along okay oh hi Lois glad you got on 
Melinda, from California. Nice of you to get on again today. Don't talk too loud, Melinda, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm going to stamp off and see if I want this full strength or if I want it a little bit lighter. See how this one's just a little bit darker than this one? But maybe I'll even mix it up a little bit. So maybe we'll do some stamped off and some darker. How about that? So I'm going to stamp off a little bit of the ink and I'm going to just plop that on there. Maybe this one I'll do full strength. Okay, it doesn't matter how it matches up because it's not going to be perfect either way. And I'll do this one stamped off too. And then let me try a different direction. There we go. All right, now you can see how it leaves that gap, right? Right in there. It, the ink didn't get in there because of the height of this is higher than the height of that. But like I said, not to worry. It's going to be okay. All right, so now let's get some of the, the smaller flowers. Like I said, this one is, this little splatter is bigger, more meant for the big flower, but I'm just going to use it on the little one too. And it's possible I will want a little green in here. So I'll change my mind. We have that prerogative, right? See how it goes? Okay, so I'll get the leaf. Just a small one. And the splatter. Couple of them right in there. Fill in some smaller places. Whenever you're doing this, do the big things first. Because you really don't want this overlapping too much unless what you overlap is going to be darker than what's underneath. Okay. Maybe we'll bring. Huh. Oh. A little bit there. Oh, that didn't get too dark. Well, that's okay. We'll pretend. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Bring us some of those colors there. Now I have to get my green ink pad. I think I'll use garden green on this. And I'm going to test it on my scrap paper first. Okay, yep, that looks pretty good. And we're just going to add a little splatter of color there. Now this one, I would say, does have a direction. To me, it looks like it sort of curves this way like the leaf, so I'm doing it in that direction. Okay, brings in a little color. I like that. Oh, Julie got a big die cut machine. Woo, good for you. All right. So then we will carefully take this off. That's why I said just put a little spot of adhesive on the back. And I like to give it a little wiggle and then it pulls off. Then we can put full adhesive on the back. Whether you use your stamp and seal or your liquid glue. It's all good. As you know, I usually like using the glue. Once in a while, I'll use the stamp and seal. Okay, so your one and a one and three quarters inch white is going on the two inch colored cardstock, and then that's going to get laid right back over the original image, and then you're not going to see those gaps. So, yeah, that's sort of highlighted. It's like putting a little, well, it is putting a frame around a certain spot to say, oh, look at this. So that's where we have that. I'm going to use my liquid glue this time just so I have a little more wiggle room to make sure it's straight. So you can line up where those other lines of the flowers and the leaves were before. 
and it's like a little magnifying glass pointing that out right okay so then we're going to put that on the colored cardstock and that looks really nice just as it is first we need a sentiment right <laughs> all right let's get a sentiment on there let's do um oh i need some birthdays so i'm going to use happy birthday from artistically inked and here we go oh last night on the on my zoom call one of my customers said you know i don't usually see you cleaning your stamps how do you do that well here we go using my chamois i love the chamois more than the stamp and scrub that we used to have um this just rinses clean squeeze out it's like a sponge and we're all good to go so put your stamps back right away make it a habit or else things get lost or they fall on the floor they get because they're sticky in the back they get picked up from something else so you never know um all right so let's stamp that in memento black i'm going to test it here first especially when you don't have your photopolymer stamps when you have the foam stamps okay they feel nice everything as you're stamping them but sometimes the decals could be a little off or the way it's, it's cut on the rubber could be a little off so i always like to try it on my grid paper line up what i think looks like it it would be straight and it's showing okay it is straight sometimes if i see maybe the 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 rubber image is a little higher on the left i'll know okay when i stamp it i have to bring that side down a little bit and i will practice that this one seems pretty good you can't help it you know especially when you put the decals on sometimes they're slightly off okay there we go so we've got all this fancy and a nice plain sentiment i like to sort of complement that a little bit or not overwhelm and we can put that on our card base and it's a quick, easy spotlighting card. There are lots of different techniques for spotlighting. This is just one easy one. Now, if you wanted, you could put another layer. Just cut this layer, this white layer, down to three and three quarters by five, and then put your other color layer, like black, would have looked really nice in here. But um, I wanted to do it the actual quick, easy way first. But I'll show you one that has a separate layer as well. All right, so nice and quick and easy that is. All right, now fun new toys. So pe some people getting orders in. Okay, my um, suggestion that I'm telling everybody these days is to be aware of some of the products that you really love from the current annual and mini catalogs because in starting in may there's going to be a new catalog the mini will be over may 1st um or the, the and and then the um new catalogs will begin okay there won't be a mini right now but there will be a new annual catalog and also there's some new online things remember I sent that out in my newsletter. I think I might have put something on Facebook, too. Stampin' Up! is starting an online collection. Things that are not going to be found in the catalog. You can only view them online. And, of course, order them online. But um, they could be mixed with orders from the regular catalogs. But you can only view them online. And this way they can change things out, in and out, more um, regularly than... In the actual printed catalogs so if there's ever um you know when they start running out of something they could replace it with something else so something new stamped up is trying all right getting these guys back did anybody do one of these along with me live how did it go okay well pat you don't need this stamp set i'm going to show you different options um, but I do, this is always a fun one. I do like this one. I haven't used it in a long time. I used it a lot when it first came out. 
So it kind of we kind of go on to different things. All right, I'm going to put this back. And I'm going to move this over here. Oh, I'm going to show you another little trick. Sometimes, like this flower, um, sometimes you might struggle to where it goes back. Oh, well, first of all, I like to keep the outside rubber, as you can see, in my stamp cases. I think it helps hold the stamps in a little bit better. And, you know, like if this starts to get a, a little less sticky, that means you have to clean it. But... If it starts to get a little sticky, at least it fits into the rubber and that holds it in. Also, I can see how they um, fit in the case nicely. And thirdly, I can also see, okay, what's missing? I can't put this in a way yet. I still have to find these pieces. So here's my other trick. Do you see these little dots on here? When I have a stamp that has a shape that's not terribly clear, you know, to the eye at first, and you're thinking, okay, wait, which way does it go? I put a little dot as a guide on the edge of the stamp and then the edge of the, the frame, so that way, okay, it goes right in like that. I don't have to play around with, okay, which way is it fitting in? This one is a little easier to see because this side is angled and the other side is a little bit more straight. But if they were both straight, I would do the same thing here too because I'm just one of those people I'd like it to, to fit in pretty well. <laughs> okay, so that's um, the puppy. Oh, thank you, Kai. Glad you like that. Um, and next one, let's see, should I do the... Um, all right, I'll do the one that's just the black and white with a touch of color. So I will do use the Happiness Abounds using these flowers. Now, typically... Like the poppies, if you wanted, you can color them in with whatever, whether it's a two-step stamp or if you just want to use your blends or markers or um, whatever method you like, watercolor pencils, whatever you like to use. Um, but this one, we're just going to, I'm just going to use the outlines. I'm going to leave it black and we're going to add a, a, just a little touch of color. All right, so... Well, it's going to be quite a pop of color, but not much color. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All right. Happiness abounds. I think I'm going to need a bunch of these stamp sets of blocks here. Okay, so it's going to be black. And oops, this is going to be my inside. This one, I did cut down another quarter of an inch. So this is three and three quarters by five because I'm going to put another layer. My pop of color is going to be... Melon Mambo. I'm going to put that behind so it's going to have that extra layer and the black is going to frame it nicely. So we could have done a similar thing on the poppies. I would have maybe cut this down and then put the black in between the red and, and this to frame it. But it looks lovely the way it is too. But I just want to show you a quick, easy way. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to use these. Now these are the photopolymer, so we have a variety of flowers. There are actually one, I'm going to use them all, <laughs> make a nice little bouquet, two, I'll just, three, and then I'll switch this one, oh no, I have one there, okay, four, and then we also have some leaves. Okay, so, oh, uh, see that one of my leaves fell off. Oh, here it is. It got stuck on my sheet. I also like to keep the sheet over. Again, for sort of that reason, it kind of helps hold things in a little bit um, and kind of protects it, keeps it from getting a little dusty or lint from the papers or whatever but this one I used a lot and I do need to clean it so it's a little less sticky and that's why it kind of fell off my my case here so keep the case clean and it, it gets um, a little less sticky because you're cutting with paper papers you know little fibers that we can't see so much get around oils from your skin um, so I will just take some little dish detergent and go over these and I may as well just do the whole set while I'm at it okay 
All right, I'll do that one later. I'm going to fill in with the leaf at the end. We're going to take our white. Where is my white piece? Did it fall away? Oh no. Um, oh, here it is. Got it. All right, so one and three quarters and two. That's going to be my spotlight with that same color, that Melon Mambo. All right, so a little bit of glue. I will put just a little smudge of glue on either side. Now, this multi-purpose glue is called multi-purpose because it can be permanent glue or temporary glue. So if you put it down right away while it's wet, it's a permanent glue. It will stay on and it will stick very well. If you let it dry a little bit until it just gets a little tacky, and I might just spread it out a little bit so it gets done a little quicker. Now it's a temporary glue. It will stick to things and be able to lift off very easily, but it's not going to be permanent. Right? That's what temporary means, right? So um, that's what I'm going to be doing here. So we'll do the same thing. I'm going to put that about there. And then we're going to just use the outline images. Make sure I get them all. And I might start on this side this time. There we go. I'll clean it off right away because I think, well, let me do a little bit on the other side for a little balance. Mm. There we go. Okay, clean it off. One thing you could do is clean off some of the ink from here before you clean it off on your chamois. That way your chamois doesn't get quite as dirty as quickly. All right, then we'll do the next biggest flower. Working from the biggest to smallest, and you can fill in the gaps. And leave room from, for some leaves. Um, okay, I'll leave that out. A minute. Okay, we got some all different kinds of flowers here. And then maybe I'll do two of these. Let's go in a different direction. This one has a little bit of a stem, so I'm going to get that up against the other flowers. If it's behind there, yes, yeah, upside down, but it's drooping. <laughs> we'll put it that way. I'm going to put this this way, and then we'll attach that to a leaf. All right, let's get some leaves in here. Let me clean this off. And then this. It goes pretty quickly. And it's a good card to do multiples of. Because you can just go across, go across a whole sheet and then cut it off. That can work too. I'm going to squeeze this leaf right down in here. It is going to overlap a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to put a little here. Okay, so all black and white. It does look a little bit busy, but once we spotlight a piece of it, this one here, it will draw our eye to that part, and then the rest will be sort of like background. I'm going to take my marker and finish off that line. That's where the Stampin' Write markers come in handy. I use my black a lot. We have a brush tip, and we have a fine point tip, which is perfect for this kind of thing. I'm just going to bring that down. So it looks like it's going behind and maybe same thing with this leaf. I don't want to seem like they're floating. Maybe I'll touch up the others while I'm at it. Okay, so you could color these. That would be fine. And it would be nice if I did one of each, one black and white and then one colored. But let's just um, leave it at that and see how it all looks together. Let's layer it up. We'll take this off. 
it comes off very nicely and it's just always sticky. That's why if you get glue on your worksheet, uh, workplace, then it's going to, um, um, always be sticky. <laughs> so one thing you can do about that, here's my other tip, is you can use your embossing buddy. I mean, aside from getting a whole new sheet of paper, you can use your embossing buddy, which this one I've had forever, years and years ago, then Stampin' Up! stopped carrying it, but now it's in the embossing kit when, where you get the tray. Um, and it's just a very fine powder. So if your paper is sticky, your work surface, just take the embossing buddy and go over it and it will get rid of that little stickiness there. All right, so let's put some real glue on here and put it on the pink. Hey, good morning, Marsha. Nice to see you again. Marsha was on my meeting last night too. Doing a lot of stamping. And then it's going to cover that up. Now look how that really pops at and the rest just sort of becomes background. See, just looking at this alone might have been a little bit busy. But once we get this, it highlights that area there. So Melon Mambo is not a color I use a lot of, but I love the bright pinks with black. It just has a really chic look to it, I think. Right, so like I said, this was cut down a little lower to three and three quarters by five, layering it on four by five and a half, and then that's going on the black. Oh, sentiment, sentiment first. Let's get something on there. We will use, let's see, something from here. Want something... Long many thanks, congratulations, you're wonderful and anyway. You know what, I still need birthdays, so I'm going to do the birthday one. I seem to use those up the most. Okay, because it's photopolymer, a little easier to see that you're getting it straight. Not that I can still make mistakes with it, right? I'm glad you like that idea, Lois. You haven't heard me say that before. Okay, there we go. Ta -da! See, sometimes I get the extra ink off here before taking it to my chamois. That way I have less ink on my chamois and it, I can wait a little longer before I clean it. Okay, there we go. And on this one, Lois, I'm going to honor you and put on some bling. My friend Lois likes glitter and bling and shine. And I think this card needs that. So, rhinestones, Lois, rhinestones. <laughs> and if you wanted to, you could pop this up with dimensionals. Just for time purposes, I'm just going to glue it down. <laughs> okay, nice chic look. I love the dark pink with the black, like I said. Okay, here we go. Rhinestone time. Oh, I have to find them. They were out. There we go. Well, maybe I'll have to come back to that. I don't know. Oh, here we go. I got him. I got him. Got him. Okay. Ooh, look how pretty that's going to be. Sparkle, right? All right. Um, all right. Let's see here. Let's get... I only have one size here, so it's good to do things in threes or five. Odd numbers are good. Oh, you know what? For these little guys, I like using the putty tip on the take your pick tool. Sticks right on there. And 
Where should I put it? Oh, over here maybe? Okay, it gives a little glimmer, glimmer there, a little shine. Wish I had a few bigger ones. Okay, let me see something here. Okay. So that really makes it a little extra special then, right? So there are the two. I'm going to do one more with um, artistically inked with a lot more colors. So let me clean that off. Do I have tape? Look at Julie, I'm reading a comment. Do you have tape on the bottom of your clear sheet set? Um, okay, let me see. Um, you mean over here? Um, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. These stamps are clinging directly to the plastic. And on here, I just was doing a little experiment. I, for this, I put washi tape on to make just like a little thing for me to grab the plastic that covers it. So I don't know if that's what you're talking about, the tape or um, tape under here. But the cling, these, um, not the cling, the photopolymer stick directly to the plastic case. And um, this tape is... I'm not sure I really needed the, sometimes it's hard to, to get the edge of it to pull off. So I thought, well, let me try putting a little tab on, you know, for the washi tape to be able to pull it up. So it's still out on that. Don't know if it's worth it or not. But anyway, here we go. All right, so this next one, fun color. We're doing kind of bright colors today. I'm going to use Starry Sky, which is one of the current in colors that will carry over to the next catalog because the in colors last for two years. And so I'm using Starry Sky for my base. Here are my whites. Of course, the others, you would put your white pages inside and of course stamp a little something, right? On the inside to make that pop. Okay, so there's that. Here's my one and three quarters and my two inch. So we're going with this color scheme this time. I might add a pop of Granny Apple Green. I'm going to show you how I came across that. Sometimes it's accidents that make us think of new ideas. All right, so here we go. Real quick again. Just put a little bit of the, the glue. Let that dry while I get my stamps ready. Using Artistically Inked, which is a fun set to get a lot of pop of color quickly and easily and we will be using starry sky Oops, sorry for the noise there starry sky ink granny apple green balmy blue and so saffron what a nice color combination right kind of springy you got your bold colors but you got your other colors to um soften it a little bit too so it's not too too overwhelming so again we're going to start with a bigger image first I'll take that guy off and that one's going to be Bami, uh, starry sky nice and big and bold oh okay oh good Susan you have I, yeah that makes sense to um, put the tape because the arthritis gives you something to grab, right? All right, so again, you want to test and see, do you want this full strength or do you want it stamped off a little bit? Notice it almost looks like two different colors, okay? This is definitely a darker, um, more toward navy, and this is a little bit more purpley. This is a purpley blue. I want the full strength on this. So I'm going to... Stamp it over here and then on the other side as well. Okay, this has um, kind of a an inky um, 
look to like an alcohol um smear to it, alcohol marker smear whatever so it's, it's really kind of cool i'm going to clean this off right away see look at all that extra ink before putting it on my pad my shimmy i like to keep it in a thin stamp case the dvd case size and it's enough to keep it from drying out too much yet it's not totally sealed so it can breathe and it's not going to get uh, messy or moldy if you leave it closed up anything wet and moist for any length of time will get a little musty smelling all right so this guy's done let's do the next flower having this little rose looking stamp here and i'm going to do that in two different colors bobby blue and the so saffron So let's see, I will do the saffron next, and we'll put some leaves, so similar to the other one, but just a little bit more color. Oh, silly me. Oh, you guys have to remind me, and I'm not looking at my uh, thing, I forgot to put my um, spotlight thing there. So let's make this one a little different, okay? So there you go, we had a little mistake, but we can make it work otherwise. So let's put the spotlight in a different spot because I already stamped over here. So let's try something different. So I'm gonna make this kind of curve around this way. How about that? That would be nice. Right, again, you can see normally you don't wanna do this because you'll get that gap. Put a little piece here. And then our sentiment can go right there. We'll have a smaller sentiment this time. I'm going to clean that off and then switch over the same flower with balmy blue. And we'll put some leaves. Close up the ink, not using. Get that out of the way. And, oh, that's shiny. Okay, good. Getting a lot of tips today. hint of one up there. Okay, we'll fill the rest in with leaves. I know, I love the starry sky. Don't, oh, just, I, so pretty. I love that color. Like I said, that one's definitely staying, those five in colors, the parakeet parade, the orchid oasis, starry sky. Sweet Sorbet and Tahitian Tide. They will all stay. Okay, next for the leaves. See, now I can quickly see what direction that flower goes in there. These are obvious because of the shape. Okay, leaves. Rainy Apple Green going with the bright color. So we have two really kind of bright, bold colors, and then we have two more subtle colors. Now I have two leaves I'm going to see which ones fit where this little guy can fit in there and I can even make that one a double Okay, they can overlap this we'll put here and maybe the one here I know it's gonna overlap this flower but because the other flower is dark Probably won't be seen so much anyway, right? Let's add a little bit more. Fill in some spaces. Again, you don't have to get too crazy with it. And I think feel it needs something there, but I wish I had something small. Hmm. Okay, I guess I just have to do a little leaf. go in another direction okay now I'm going to try to just get a little of that leaf down there 
I'm going to clean the stamp off. I'm going to try to connect that a little bit better. So let me clean this off. We get more picky with our own projects, I think. And I'll clean this one off. And I'm going to just try to ink up just the tip of that. And I'm going to get this little edge off that I inked. I'm going to try to get a little more color down there. And it seems like I have to go a little further. Okay. It's a little bit better. A little smudgy, but I think it's better than this space. Okay. Luckily, on this set, there's a nice little hello. Or I could do best wishes. I'll do best wishes this time. The other one I did hello. I'll do best wishes. Here it is. And I'm going to step that in the starry sky as well. It's nice and dark. I love that fun script, right? Okay. Here we go. Oh, look how pretty that is. I love it. Oh, hi, Karen. Nice to see you on. Okay, learning that you don't step on top of... I can't see the whole comment. Let me try to move this on stamps. No wonder. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you'll have to think of what it would look like. If you want to have things overlap a little bit more, like this, this does overlap the yellow, but you can't see it so much. If you did want it to overlap more, well, then you could either fussy cut one of them out and overlap them that way, or you would do a masking technique. And I do have some other videos that show how to do that. So that's something we can talk about another time. Okay, let's put it all together. And then we're done for the day. You have some weekend inspiration. Don't mind me putting my things away. Because, especially when I do these, I'm using so many different products. And sometimes I just tend to like, oh, do it quick and move the stuff away. Well, that's when things get lost or just too messy to clean up later. Try to clean up as you go. That's my tip. Okay, that's going to go on there. I'm going to put this over here. I'll get my starry sky. And as you can see, that little mistake turned into something pretty and something a little different. Okay, that's going to go like that, and then we would do this, right? But when I was playing around with... Um, a card last night. Let me show you what happened here. This is the way we were originally intending it, right? I accidentally cut my one and three quarters white paper. I cut it into two. So this ended up being bigger. And then when I tried to mat it with this size, obviously I saw that edge. So what I did was I just cut another layer. I used the granny apple green, cut another layer, quarter of an inch bigger, and covered it up. And I really liked that result as well. So I'll do them both and you can see. Okay, you want to line up the, the images. Oh, that's a little low. A little high, I'd rather have to lower it. Okay. All right, there we go. Well, that one's showing a little bit. All right, this isn't lining up quite that well, but you know what? People aren't going to notice or know that's going to go a different way. Okay, so that brings a little bit of that green in there, and it's not all quite so just blue. I mean, if you love blue, that's perfectly fine too. But look how it um, makes a little bit difference with the um, where the spotlighting is. I cut bigger ones in the green for this in case we wanted to try that. So that's with a two and a quarter inch square. But maybe
want something a little less obvious and you can always cut it down to an eighth to have just a little bit of a little bit of that green in there I think I might do that just um, just for something different just to bring that in just a little tiny bit um, actually you know what I'm just gonna make it a little bit more than that maybe my two and an eighth was a short two and an eighth I'm gonna go a little bit a little bit more you know, just a tiny bit more of the green selling. Okay, so just cut two sides off. We're going to go just over the two and an eighth line. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, I think that shows up a little bit better. Okay, sometimes where you cut the paper can curl up a little bit, so make sure you push it down so you don't see that cut edge. You want it nice and smooth. All right, I'm going to do that. And I do like that little pop of green in there. You know, the green that came in these in colors, the Parakeet Parade, that's um, a little bit more of a yellowy green than this, a little brighter. But I, I like this one better with the flowers on there. So yeah, that spotlight can go anywhere, right? I'm going to put your foot muck on each one. So I'll get that on there. And I would take one of these flowers and leaves. I'd stamp that down in the corner here. And I would put that on the inside or maybe even down the border here. That could look pretty too. But I'll do that later. And now let's compare all the, all the things that we have. Get a clean paper out. Okay, this one's a little ragged on the edge, but at least it's a little cleaner. Okay, we can see all the four versions. There you go. So I hope you try some this weekend. And you now, of course, we could put some bling on here too. I think. Oh, I know what I had. I had in mind. The butterflies. Love these brass butterflies. They add a little bit of shine without being too blingy. I know Lois, there's no such thing as too blingy <laughs> when, when Lois is talking. But um, there we go. Let's do... This is kind of blank space. I like something to be there. I not sure exactly what. Okay, maybe here, a little over. And then we'll put another one here. Maybe another one down there. Hey, here you go. Look, it's just that little bit of shine, but it's brushed brass, so it's not too shiny. And they're flat. That's what I really like about it. And of course, I have the heat adhesive on anyway at the end. So it came out really nice. It's such easy card for that stamp set. And um, maybe this one I'll try different embellishments on just, just for fun. Well, I'm glad you like those. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Oh, I know I love the brass butterflies. Um, I'm going to stock up. That's I'm going to stock up on them because I don't know if they'll be in the new catalog or not. All right, so I'm going to flip the phone around a little bit here. Let me turn off my extra light so it's not glaring in my eyes. Turn the phone around and then I can talk to you again. Hey, hold on one second. And flip. There we go. Hi. <laughs> so I hope you try those. And, um, yeah, a couple of things. To remind you about, I'll be reminding you as we go along. I will find out the things that are retiring March 29th. All demonstrators will find that out, and then we can get that list out to you. And you can um, then make sure you get the things that you want before they're they're totally gone. You'll have the month of April to do that. 
All right, Julie, can you do this technique with things besides flowers? Absolutely. And I was going to try some of those, but I ran out of time. Like I said, we had a, um, oh, thanks for the heart. Um, we had a meeting last night. I'm also going to try the Nature's Prince. Okay, so some ferns and leaves. Something like I want to try with um, um, the teacups. That would be fun. Maybe, um, what was the other thing I was going to look at? Oh, um, I don't know, there were some, there are some, anything that kind of has a big image that you can kind of spray across your, um, spray across your page there. Um, what else do I have? Oh, this could be fun. The, the parakeets, the birds, put some of those across on a branch and then spotlight one or two of them. All right. That could definitely be a fun one. I want to try that. Um, Let's see, maybe the, this could be interesting with the brood for you, some of the, the, the beer glasses, um, the mugs, you no know, going across. So yeah, I, I definitely am going to try it with some other, with some other things, maybe even the, the elephant parade. This is a card with the elephant parade. Um, there's elephants, there are three different elephants in different, um, orientations that could be fun and look like a parade almost like the elephants going across even if they're holding the balloons that could be really cute right so i will be trying those for sure do you guys have any other questions do you have any questions um about what i did about another you know, the technique you know please ask um i'm glad you like all the ideas and yeah thanks everybody for coming on i appreciate that um Oh yeah, my um, I meant to show you my host code before. This is this is backwards, I know, but the <laughs> B two C K Y makes me think of Becky, but with a two in there, and then K C S. Okay, if you're ordering through me and your order is less than 150 before tax and shipping, please use that host code. I put it in my emails. I put it up on Facebook every once in a while. I definitely always have it on my blog. So you go to stampwithlorraine.com. It's in the sidebar right by the shopping cart and it changes. Okay. Usually it's the beginning of the month. I have it good for a month. It's only good for 30 days, but sometimes I have to change it mid month. So just beware of that. Okay. Don't just assume, oh, it's good to the end of the month. For instance, this one, I had to start the middle of last month because I had uh, what happened was I had the Super Bowl raffle. So I had a host code for that. And then, so after Super Bowl, I started this one. So that started in the middle of February and it's going to the middle of March. And then I'll have another one till the end of March. I'll try to tweak it so that it's back to the beginning of the month. It's easier that way. Okay. So um, if your order is under 150 before tax and shipping, please use the host code. And if you, finalize your order and then you forget and you say oh i just did it i forgot you can call stampin up and they will add it for you i can call stampin up and ask them to add it but i'm only allowed to do that for 10 customers in the month so if too many people do it then i can't add it and having the house code there really kind of helps me out not that i don't get credit from your sales otherwise but this gives me a little extra um and so if your order is 150 or more, a lot of you know this already, but if it's 150 or more, do not use the host code because at that level, you will gain rewards for yourself. So starting at 10%, if you have 150, it'll be $15. Okay? So, all right, hold on. I don't know what the bread is. She wants to know if you want Irish soda bread. Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, so um, oh, my daughter thought of me. She's at the bakery. She wants to know if I want some Irish soda bread. Of course. Who doesn't? Absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, that, that's, um, that's good. So yeah, thanks for remembering that house code. You can call Stampin' Up. And sometimes, you know, if I catch it, then I might ask you, oh, could you please call them and just ask them to add it. They're very nice. You call 800 Stamp Up. And they're, they're very good. If you have any problem with any other product, you can call them too. You can call me. And um, hopefully you have a good week. All right. Good weekend. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining on. Um, another sip of coffee. Keep me going today.
It's going to be a fun day. My husband and I have the grandkids for overnight. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm glad you like the cars. And, and I will put a specific post on Facebook here. You can post them underneath this um, this video, your own cards. Or um, I'll also have another one showing all the cards I made today. I'll take pictures of it and then I'll say, okay, what did you do? So hopefully we see what um, how you work this out yourself. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Cheers and hope to see you next week again. Okay, bye.